So now that we've listed the options for a particular poll, we can click an option, hit submit, and that goes through to vote.php. We can then check that both the choice and the poll, both within the form, have been submitted through, and we can then log that uh, vote um, or answer. So in here, we want to do a couple of checks. Obviously, the first thing we want to do is require in our initialization file because that contains our database connection, which we need because we're logging uh, choices here. So we're going to do an, a lazy if statement just to check if dollar underscore post poll is set and dollar underscore post choice is set. Now down here, we're just going to do a header redirect to index.php. So if a user tries to access vote.php and doesn't supply either a poll or a choice, which is would naturally be provided if the user was using the form correctly, then they're just going to be redirected to the index page. But you can handle this however you want. You can even have two if statements to check the poll first of all. And then if the choice isn't supplied, you can redirect to the poll page, however you want to do it. So now that we're in this position, we know that both these are available. We can store these within variables. So poll equals dollar underscore post poll. And down here we have a choice here. So let's just indent these like so. So we've stored both of them. Now we want, what we want to do is actually query the database. All we're going to do is one query. So I'm going to create a vote query or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to create a prepared statement here. So inside of here, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to insert into this time because what we want to insert into is pulse answers. And we want to store the user's ID, the poll that we're currently uh, voting on, and the actual choice here, so the choice that it relates to. And that gives us all the information that we need. So we want to insert into polls answers. And we're going to choose the fields we want to insert on. So that is user, poll, and choice. We don't need to insert the ID because it's auto increment. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to select this time and we're going to select the data that we want to insert. And this allows us to do a where exists, a where uh, not exists, and another where exists to check if these things actually already exist before we insert them. Basically, we don't want the same user to vote twice. So you should get the hang of this as we go along the query. So we're going to select user, poll, and choice. So we're going to uh, bind these a little bit later when we execute the query, but we're going to select these from polls. Now that might seem a little bit odd because we're not selecting the data we're inserting from polls, but we're just doing it on a table. There are probably other ways to do this, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so you might want to go ahead and look it up if you want to structure this slightly differently. So we're going to say where exists, this will basically um, if a row is returned by this subquery, that means it exists. So it depends on the row count that's returned, whether this uh, is true or false, essentially. So we're going to be doing three subqueries in total. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select ID, just a random field, ID is probably best, from the polls table where, oops, sorry, from the polls table where, the ID equals poll. Down here, we're going to say, uh, we can pull this one up. So all that does is it basically um, means that this poll actually exists because we're saying, well, do a subquery, select from the polls table. To be honest, you could probably have this after this. I'm not too sure. But we're basically wanting to make sure this poll exists before a user votes on it. Because essentially what a user could do is submit a post request on their own to vote.php, sending along poll as 100, which may not exist. We don't want to insert data that doesn't match up in our database. So we're going to say and exists as well. We're going to do another subquery here. So what are we checking for uh, existence here? Well, we're checking that the choice exists because, again, we don't want to use it to insert a choice that doesn't exist on the polls choices table. So here we do a select ID from polls 
choices where the ID of the choice equals choice. Again, our placeholder. And we can pull that up like so. Um, then last is making sure that the user hasn't already voted. So we're making sure that the user doesn't have a record in polls answers where the user ID equals the current user that's logged in and the poll doesn't equal the current poll that we're trying to vote on. That might sound a little bit complicated, but uh, let's say and not exists. And in here again, our subquery is going to be select ID from polls answers where user equals user and poll equals poll. So basically, if a user ID exists here with say one and a poll exists here, let's just say one, that means that regardless of what choice there is, the user has voted, user one has voted on poll one and therefore we're not going to allow them to vote again which is why we're saying and not exists. So let's pull this up. We also lastly want to make sure that the poll is between the start and end date so users can't vote on polls uh, before they've officially started. So again, we use and date now between polls.starts and polls.ends and then we're gonna just do a limit one on the end. So we've not actually executed this query yet. We've prepared it, but we need to pass in the data uh, to fill these placeholders. So what we're going to do is say vote query, execute, and then we obviously pass our array in. So we have three this time. We have user, which is our dollar underscore session user ID. And we have our poll, which is poll remember from up here and then we have our choice down here like so which again comes from here so we insert that and then what I'm going to do is just do a header and I'm going to locate the user back to poll.php poll equals and then the poll that's been chosen so what's going to happen now is when I submit my answer, we're still going to get these bullet points because of oh, these uh, radio fields because we haven't created the functionality to show the percentage that will come next. So if I just give this a refresh, we're on poll one, remember. So after I submit this, I expect to see a record appear here. Remember, I'm signed in with user one. So I'd expect that to appear too. So I'll hit I love it and I'll hit submit answer. OK, so we've been redirected. We don't know if this has uh, succeeded or not. Let's just refresh and it looks like it hasn't. So let's just debug this. So let's um, grab all of this here and let's paste this into SQL Pro just here and let's replace some of this information. We could do this with MPHP. We could uh, output some errors, but I find this a lot quicker. So I'm going to say uh, poll one. I'm going to say option one. I'm going to say user one as well. So let's just insert one into each of these like so. And that looks OK to me. Let's run this. OK, so we get an error here. So select ID from polls where ID equals one. Ah, Yes, of course, we've got a comma here where there shouldn't be one. Same with here as well. Massive mistake on my part. So let's go ahead and just get rid of these commas like that. And let's go ahead and try again. So I'm going to choose this poll. I'm going to hit I love it, submit that answer. And we should hopefully see that answer be inserted. So the user is one, the poll is one and the choice is one. So again, if I go to do you like polls and do I can't stand them, that's going to give me a different choice and a different poll. So we've got a poll of two and a choice of six. So to make sure these match up, a poll of two, we know that that is the do you like polls poll. And then for the choice, we know that six is I can't stand them, which is the one I just selected. So more importantly, let's now check if I can vote again on the same poll. So let's head over to here. Do you like polls? Uh, I'm going to choose this this time and hit submit. 
and that shouldn't have inserted a new record because we've already voted and that's handled with that in our query. There's a couple of things we need to change about this query because at the moment what's happening is we have our check for the poll start and end date down here. In actual fact we need to copy this and put this up into this subquery here because otherwise what's going to happen is this where it exists is going to fail uh, if that poll hasn't started. So we can actually remove these as well here. Now there's a couple of other things we need to do. Uh, within this and exists here where we check that the poll choice exists, we also alongside this need to check if the poll matches as well. And that's because if we look inside of our database under choices, um, or uh, yeah, under choices, we have a poll column and a name column. Um, now if the, uh, if the ID doesn't match where the poll is, that means that technically a user could vote on a choice that doesn't exist on that particular poll. So we say where ID equals choice and poll equals poll. So we've just refactored this really just to make sure that we cover all bases. Everything else here should be fine now. So remember we're inserting this data, we're choosing this data from a dummy table we are doing a subquery to check that the poll exists and that it's between the start and end date as we've discussed earlier. We're also then doing another subquery and we're checking if the choice exists, but we're also checking if that choice is linked to that particular poll. And then finally, we're just checking if the user hasn't already voted on that poll. So we've now given users the ability to actually vote on polls all that's left to do now is actually display the uh, total answers once a user has voted and we'll do that in the next part.